Hello, hello, welcome back to Supposedly Fun. I am Greg. I am here today to do a tag video. I was tagged by Sean the Book Maniac. Uh, he did the second installment of his Alphabet tag series. We did A last time. I'll link that down below. And this time it is N. I will link his video down below for that one. So, I like these tags. This is fun. So let's get started right away. Number one, N is for novella, the last good one you read. Now let's go on a quick journey because the last novella I read is actually from this month. I just finished it. Uh, I listened to, to the audio of Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata for Women in Translation Month, but I want to talk about that in a separate video, so I'm not going to do that one. The one I read previously would be Lie With Me by Philippe Besson. Uh, I did not like this one as much as I had anticipated I would, so I'm not going to talk about that. The one before that was Ghost Wall by Sarah Moss, and I really enjoyed that one at the time, but I had a fever when I read it, and I think that really tied into the experience of the book. Um, and I ended up liking it more than I have since, looking back on it. So I'm not going to talk about that one either. And that means we have to go back to February with and one of my favorite books of the year so far, The Gifts of the Body by Rebecca Brown. This book was published in the mid-90s. It is about a home health care worker uh, who works with AIDS patients. In the beginning, it seems very cold and emotionally distant. But as the book progresses, the protagonist begins to have little breakdowns as her patients die. And she, she keeps bringing in more and more patients and circumstances around her job start to change a little bit. And I just thought it was beautiful. I thought it was sad and heartfelt and really wonderful. I would absolutely recommend it. And it is only 163 pages. So there you go. Prop number two. N is for Neighbor, a work of fiction focused on, or at least largely concerned, with neighbors. I'm going with a classic on this one, To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee, and I think this one pretty perfectly captures the setting of the novel, and specifically the setting of the street in which Scout grows up on and lives, and the people who surround her. I think that is one of the most charming things about the book. You really get to know Miss Maudie. There's a real sense uh, of the Radleys, of course. Um, and then, after, I'm, God, I'm forgetting her name, but there's the neighbor who seems like a mean old lady, and eventually Jem, uh, is it Jem or Scout? I should have looked this up before <laughs> I started the video. But one of them has to read to her, I think it's Jem, um, and it turns out she is dying, she's trying to work her way off of morphine so she can die beholden to nothing, uh, which is, by the way, one of my favorite parts of the book. Um, and you just really get a sense of this community and the people who live there and the people around them. Uh, that is absolutely one of the things that I think makes this a classic. Prop number three. N is for name, a writer you recommend whose first and or last name starts with N. I'm going with something off of my TBR. Uh, Nobel Laureate V.S. Naipaul? I think that's how you say that? Um, I've had this book for well over a decade and have not gotten around to reading it even though it is only small. So... I don't really know what my problem is. It also sounds amazing. It's only 211 pages. Uh, it's half a life, spanning three continents and an entire history of caste, class, exile, and dislocation. Half a life is a beautifully resonant study of the fraudulent bargains that make up an identity. I mean, what more do you need? Why have I not gotten to this? Prompt number four, N is for nuptials, a work of fiction that didn't suck about a wedding. A place for us. Duh. <laughs> this is by Fatima Farheen Mirza. This is vying to be my favorite book of the year with A Fine Balance by Rahinton Mystery. So the premise of this book is that a, it's, it's, it's about a family. The sister is getting married and she convinces her estranged brother, who has not seen the family for I believe three years, to come to the wedding. And the wedding becomes the framework for them all to reflect on the past um, their history together, their arguments, the things that led them to this position where they are today as a fractured family. It is a stunning, gorgeous, extremely well-written novel, which is all the more remarkable because it is a debut novel. I absolutely recommend this as well. It is definitely a novel about a wedding that does not suck. Prompt number five, N is for Not Aging Well, a book you like less than when you read it. Now this ties in with a future reading goal of mine that I've been putting off because I'm afraid I'm not going to like these books anymore. That is that I want to reread the Harry Potter series, but I'm worried I'm not going to like them anymore. I know. I know. It scares me too. By the way, I'm holding up the Tales of Beetle the Bard because you can't see it, but I have all of my Harry Potter books lying flat on my shelf like this. So it's just too much work to get the other ones out. This one was lying flat. So here you go, Tales of the Beetle the Bard. But still, it's the Harry Potter series. I did reread the first one about two years ago, 
and was shocked by the amount of plot holes in it, which I had not, recommend, uh, not re recommended, had not really remembered. Um, and I, I'll get into it when I get into the project, but I also think Harry's kind of a jerk. So I feel like I need to revisit them, but I'm afraid to. So <laughs> your childhood has to die at some point, I guess. All right, prompt number six. N is for N, a book title with a lot of N's. I'm going with Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clark. This is a proper chunky book. Um, I did not expect to like this book when I read it. It is about uh, an alternate history of the world in which magic is real, and um, there, uh, Mr. Norrell is a wizard in England, and Jonathan Strange is this upstart wizard who's coming in and really powerful, almost in a Star Warsian sense. He is very powerful, but tempted by the dark side. Um, that does not sound like something that is in my wheelhouse, but I deeply enjoyed this. I think Susanna Clark does a really great job with world building. I do think parts of this book could have been edited and streamlined a little bit, uh, but one of my favorite things about it is that as part of this world building, there are a lot of footnotes in this book, and I love a book with footnotes. I am a sucker for that, so there you go. Prompt number seven. N is for not sure, a book you keep changing your mind about whether you want to read or not. I'm going to go with Bastard Out of Carolina, which is a book I picked up uh, at my library used last month. Um, I hear so many wildly mixed things about this. Um, I, some people, I, I don't think anybody I, really loves this book, but there are certainly people who like it. Um, basically, this is about a woman known simply as Bone. She is a South Carolina bastard with an annotated birth certificate to tell the tale. Observing everything with the mercilessly keen eye of a child, Bone finds herself caught in a family triangle that will test the loyalty of her mother, Annie. Her stepfather, Daddy Glenn, calls Bone cold as death, mean as a snake, and twice as twisty. I mean, that all sounds fine, but what I've heard about this is that it's basically like torture porn because um, she is abused very badly. And... That kind of makes me waffle back and forth, but I got a copy of it for a dollar, so I figure if even if I don't ever get to it, I'm not really out very much money. Prompt number eight, and is for nitpick, a sm some small literary writing or book-related thing that drives you around the bend. Well, I've, I, I've talked about this before on the channel, but I absolutely hate it when a book deliberately withholds information from you and then teases you with the fact of that withholding. It's basically a strategy for building suspense. Like you, um, and actually I've seen a lot of commercials as I watch book, booktube in particular from masterclasses. I think the one with John Grisham is the one where he says, tease people with something and then reveal it later because that will hook them in and they'll continue in through the book. And I, 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 every time I saw that commercial, I would scream at my laptop, no, <laughs> nobody do that. I hate it. It drives me insane. I don't know if you've seen Clue, but like flames on the side of my face. I hate it. Okay, prompt number nine. N is for next to nothing, a book you read as an adult you can barely remember a blessed thing about. I have folders for each reading year on Goodreads, so I went back through them to find one that I really just genuinely remembered absolutely nothing about. I went all the way back to the reading year that was 2016 and found Jonathan Safran Foer's book, Here I Am, which I, de I definitely DNF'd, but I remember absolutely nothing about it. I could not tell you the plot, the characters, what happens, nothing. I It's just a complete blank for me. I don't even really remember if I hated it. I know I didn't finish it, but I don't even remember why I didn't finish it or what the deal is. Prompt number 10, and is for New Zealand, a book or writer you would like to read from there. Find out about one if need be, it'll be fun. It was fun. I did enjoy looking up New Zealand writers because part, again, part of why I read is I like discovering new voices, new areas, and things like that. And New Zealand is pretty much completely unknown to me. And given that, I feel bad going with the person who seems to be the most famous New Zealand uh, author, um, especially since I only recognized his name because there was um, one of his books was adapted into a movie uh, roughly 10 years ago. Um, and that seems like a cheap way to get into it. And that's Widi Ihimera. He is a Maori writer. He had, writes from the Maori perspective, which to me sounds fascinating. So it's not that I'm choosing him because he's the only name on the list that I recognize. It's because he writes from that Maori perspective. Um, it's not just in Whale Rider, which is a book about a Maori girl who is trying to prove that she is worthy of leading her tribe, even though she is a girl. Um, that's like a through line throughout his books, and I think it's a fascinating perspective. So, there you go. 
Prompt number 11, N is for nodding off, a mind-numbingly boring book. Now, this is a difficult prompt for me because if I'm not interested in a book or I find it boring, I bail hard and never look back. I will say, though, that parts of the book Mildred Pierce by James Cain were absolutely mind-numbing. Uh, basically, she wants to open her own restaurant and the book really goes hard into details about her thinking about location, her thinking about how the restaurant should be laid out and the furniture and the tables should be set up. Um, her thinking about the menu and how to make it easy to do prep work and cooking work and how to cook the food. Pages and pages and pages of information about that. And I love restaurants. I'm a foodie, but she's not cooking like gourmet food. She's frying chicken, basically. And it's definitely, James Cain is definitely not into the food porn aspect of this. He's really hard into the business side of this restaurant. And parts of me wanted to die as I was reading it. So, I think it fits. Prompt number 12, N is for next. The next book that you are going to read. Well, I am go I'm in a lot of different places with my reading life right now. I am currently reading three books and I'm about to add a fourth. I'm reading The Stonewall Reader. Um, this is a buddy read that I am doing with Ollie over at Book Draw. I'm really loving this book. I'm really loving the conversations that we're having about it. Uh, it is, of course, about the history of the gay liberation movement before Stonewall, during Stonewall, and after Stonewall. Fascinating book. Very happy to be reading it. And because Toni Morrison died, I decided to dive into one of her books, and I picked up The Bluest Eye because I want to say Beloved for my Pulitzer Prize project. Um, and this, spoiler alert, I, I'm only about halfway through. Um, but this is going to be a contender for one of my favorite books of the year. It could very well end up in the mix with a, fine, a, a place for us and a fine balance. It, her writing is tremendous. I am. It's not an easy book to read because of the things that are happening in it, but it is just tremendous. So good. I am also listening to... Uh, well, I was waiting for a specific audio to become available on Libby, my library app, and... While I was waiting, I did some audiobooks that uh, I, I could get right away that would qualify for Women in Translation Month. Um, a Convenience Store Woman was part of that. I am currently about a third in, a third of the way into Please Look After Mom by Kyung Suk Shin. Um, really enjoying that. But I got an email last night that The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead, which is the audiobook I had been waiting for, is now available. And I'm about to st start that. That is going to be my next book. And I really jam-packed my reading month for August because I'm really enjoying all of these books and I don't want to put any of them down or let any of them slide. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, and Brian of Bookish is doing, he's co-hosting a read-along of Light in August by William Faulkner. And I had really just wanted to jump in on that. So I have to get, get through these books so I can get caught up on that. I will link his video about the read-along down below. For me, it feels like a great excuse to finally get around to reading William Faulkner. Um, just gotta figure out how to fit all of this stuff in. So, there you go. And prompt number 13, N is for now it's your turn, tag a bevy of booktubers. Well, if you are watching this, tag, you're it. That's just how I roll. So anyway, that is this book tag. As always, I really appreciate your time watching this video. Uh, if you're already subscribed, thank you for that. If not, I hope that you enjoyed this enough to follow along on uh, this crazy whatever this is. <laughs> but anyway, I will be back again. Until then, thank you and happy reading.